stuff. I said, oh well, I have a message whenever they put me to preach. And I just kept, went home. The next day I called brother, um, youth pastor Alex, unrelated to anything else. And he goes, hey, I need you to preach. And I said, well, that was quick. <laughs> I need to have a message. So God gave me this message a day before I was actually told to preach. So I know this is word of God. It's not, it's not what I chose to do. Kind of what, going off what uh, Pastor Alex and Sister Miriam said, but what both of them were saying is my message is about embracing the struggle. Now, I thought to myself, this is a youth slash English service. 12, I don't know how old you are, 16? 15, and how old are you? 13. 13. I went back in retrospect, and I thought about things at that time when I was that age, and what was the struggle for me? What was something that I thought about a lot? What was something that, <clears throat> as a young Christian man, what bothered me and what, what I struggled with? And let's open our scriptures to Roman chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It says, more than that, we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, I, I wanted this to be as simple as I could. I didn't want to bring so much stories and so much things, because my... My crowd is just these two, and I wanted them to understand and grasp what was being said. What so, are your crowd? Yes, you know what I meant, but they were my, my age group that I was focusing on. This whole message is for everyone. This one spoke to me first. Mm -hmm. Embracing the struggle. Now, struggles are something that we deal with every single day of our lives. It's something that we wake up and something else comes up, something else is a struggle. This happens, something else is that. So it's something that we have to constantly deal with. And embracing is to, is to take it and, 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 and do something positive with that struggle. So I said to myself, growing up, like I was saying, 13 and 15 years old, I said, Lord, why I got to go to church every Sunday? Why I got to be in church all the time? You know, and it's a, it was a struggle with me because I wanted to do what? Play outside. I wanted to watch TV. And those were things as a young adult, as a youth that I wanted to do. And it was a struggle in my life. Not understanding now as an adult, those times that I didn't go out, that I was in the house of the Lord, was planting seeds in my life, which Sister Graham said. I was being fed the word of God, which I needed to hear at that time. So God knows everything that happens in retrospect. <clears throat> Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest, rest upon me for Jesus Christ's sake. When I, in my weaknesses, in my hardships, in my persecution, in everything that I am, when I am weak, Lord, then I am strong. Now, what is this saying? It's saying in the struggles, I don't know what you struggle with, but in everything that we do, we find glory in God for it. And saying in here, in this, in 2 Corinthians, in my weaknesses, in my hardships, when I'm down at times, when I don't want to come to church, when I'm frustrated with mommy and poppy, when I'm frustrated with my brothers and sisters, that I don't want to deal with it, we have to rely on Christ. Those are the times we have to seek who he is and say, Lord, I know I'm going through what I'm going through. I know it's a hardship in my life, but it's for a reason. Pray to God and ask for that. What's this reason, Lord? Why do I have to go through this, Father God? Seek your scriptures and, and, and indulge in it so that way he can give you an understanding of what's going on in both of your lives or in all of our lives. Amen? Amen. Now, when you preach to me, I'm old school, is you give a theme and you bring a character to that theme. So when I said struggle, automatically Job came to my mind. Now, I know everybody here pretty much knows the story of Job, right? Job lost everything, had it all. Had everything. Uh, he's equivalent to whatever the most richest person here on earth is. He had it all. He had land. He had children. He had a wife. He had money. Job had everything. 
But one thing Job had that most didn't is a tremendous faith in who God was in his life. Amen. Besides all the material things, his faith was none other of this world. And God wanted to show him the world what it really means in this world and on earth it is to have faith in God. So what did the Lord allow him to do? He let Satan take everything from him. The struggle took everything. His kids, his land, his own physical health. He started getting sick. He had a wife that wasn't supportive of what he was doing. And through everything that he did, he never, never, never doubted God. In all that he took away, Job still found a way to make sure that he praised God through everything. In his sickness, Lord, I am yours. This is your body, Lord. He never said, well, why, why am I going through this? Why me? He never did so. And it's the ultimate uh, uh, visual of what faith is and how he embraced the struggle. As men, as women, we, we tend to be weak. It would have been easy for anybody to be like, you know what? I don't want to be a Christian no more. I'm walking away. I'm done. But he never did so. He never turned his back on Christ. What this did to me in my life was show me how when times get rough, when things really start to, to mount up on me, so don't crack under the pressure. Don't, don't feed into the flesh. Don't do what the world wants me to do, but be different and submit myself to God and say, Lord, I embrace this struggle, Lord. I embrace what you're going through with me because I know that I'm not alone in this. You understand? You're not alone in everything that you go through. And I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Something for the for the young for the young ones. Let's go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Matthew 6, 28 and 33. Yes. Chapter 6, verses 28 and 33. Yes. What? Is up oh. oh, there you go. So why do we worry about clothing, considering all illness in the field? Why do we grow neither toil nor spin? Now, this is what something that made me think about when I was young. My mom's a witness. When I was young, I was all into clothing. I, I, I kind of still am. But I worried about having the latest shirts. I worried about having the latest sneakers and the best jeans. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I kind of put it over my Christianity at one point. Mm -hmm. I would work extra duties and do what I could to do just to make sure I had the best sneakers. I would do what I had to do to make sure I had the nice hat to go along with the sneakers just so I could fit in with everybody else and do what everybody else was doing. Now, to me, that made, this blew my mind because I didn't know, even in the scripture, he talks about our clothing. How we put presence over our material things that we put on our body just to fit in with others. And he said, why worry about those things? We shouldn't have to worry about clothing. We shouldn't have to worry about, you know, what does Christina think about how I smell? It's not about that. And I know that's a struggle because, yeah, she shouldn't, she shouldn't worry about what I smell like. Uh, it's a struggle when I was young, because I remember being 12, looking at a youth and saying, man, I, want, I wish I had those sneakers. I wish I fit in with them. And not having it and feeling ostracized or pushed to the side because I wasn't with that crowd. And I remember how much I struggled saying to myself, instead of paying attention to what was going around inside of the church, I was more worried about how come, how come I can't get those sneakers? Or where can I get those sneakers from? How many shifts do I have to work? And it's a struggle. Instead of saying, you know what? Embracing that, the fact that my parents always supplied for me. I always had sneakers on my feet, right? Instead of saying, Lord, I'm grateful and I embrace the fact that I may not have the best, but I have. Lord, I have this and it's for a reason why I don't have Jordans. Who's to say I leave the church in the Bronx with Jordans and I would have got robbed and killed? You know, it, it, it's the true fact that happens in this world today. Things we, we possess material so much, and it's easily taken away from us. People possess a car. I got to work every time to make this car payment. Some drunk driver hits them. It's gone. Mm -hmm. 
So we have to embrace our, our, even what we have in our backs. Embrace it and say, Lord, I'm grateful for it. Thank you for the fact that I may not have the best, but I have. Mm -hmm. And that, that was a... That was strictly for them because I remember that. And I was I told, even told uh, Sister Jessica, I didn't even know the Lord spoke about clothing on our backs. Why worry about it? I never knew this. You know, I always heard people say, don't, don't worry about materialistic things. But it was always because, of, yeah, you know, that's poppy or that's the, the eldest saying that they don't understand. But when the scripture says it, it's for a reason. Yeah. There's, there's things that we have more importance than, than just a clothing or just a style that to fit in. Amen? Mm -hmm. Philippians 4.13. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that one. Correct? Amen. Everybody knows that one. Mm -hmm. I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Right? Mm -hmm. In your struggle. In your struggle. Kind of what she said. It's the ones <clears throat> that, that get caught up with struggling in life. Right? We have all these things going on. But I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. Every time that there's an obstacle there... Every time there's something that you may not see an exit out of it, Christ gives you the strength to see over it. Mm -hmm. What's the easy thing to do when somebody steps in your face and gets disrespectful? Oh, heck no, nah, not me. Not me. You know? It's easy to fit into that mode. But instead of saying, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. And say, you know what? Let me take this detour instead of submitting to what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Embracing, embracing what God wants to do in our life. That's a struggle. Trust me, when somebody gets disrespectful, as humans, you want to just, hey, oh, I'm going to push this, hey, I'm going to push this, I'm going to push this Christianity to the side real quick. Who are you? But well, we can't. We can't. We can't do so. We have to embrace what God does in our lives at all times. Even at his peak of difficulty. God's not going to test you with something that doesn't affect your life. He's not going to give you a, a, some, a hard job if you don't work. He's not going to give you the nicest person in the world. He's going to give you the worst person. The one who's going to get under, underneath your skin. The person that's going to test you to a point where you're like, what? Why even, why even go there? Right? That's, that's, what, that's, that's what happens. It's not a test if you're not tested. Right? It's the same thing like, like, like gold. If, if it's not pure gold, you put it to the fire, it has to be tested. It's the same thing in our Christianity. He's going to give us a struggle that brings us to that point of breaking. But God gives us the strength to overcome those situations in life. Yeah, sure. Right? God gives us a, 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 an escape route yeah. from those situations to do what? So we become the victor. So yeah. we can lift up his name in glory and still maintain our testimony. Amen. And that's why embracing, embracing the struggle shows your character who Christ is in your life. Amen. Because we can be different and we can just do whatever I want to do. But what testimony are we giving to, to, the, to the world of who Christ is in your life? And that, that's not, you know, and it says, greater, than, greater is he who believes in me than he who believes in the world. Continue my point of saying, that's in 1 John 4, 4, I believe. My handwriting is terrible. And greater is he who believes in me than he who believes in the world kind of goes all together. When you get that struggle, it's not a, think of it as a struggle you're here on earth, but it's not, it's not a worldly thing. It's not an earthly thing. It's a spiritual thing. So greater is he who believes in me, in God, than he who believes in the world. So that problem is smaller than what you think it is. That obstacle is smaller than what it is in front of you. Because greater is he who believes in God that believes the things in this world. So that person who angers you is smaller than my God. Amen. That struggle with clothing is smaller than, than God. Amen. That struggle of trying to fit into the society is smaller than what God is in our lives. Amen. We have to understand that and embrace, embrace the struggle. Embrace and say, Lord, I understand that I am human. I understand that I have faults, Lord, but I'm here standing for you, Father God. What do you want of me? Amen. And when you do those things, you conquer the obstacles, and you see how those struggles, they're going to always be there, but they're not as important. They start to become minute. They start to become secondary to your Christianity walk, and you start to see how God is going to build up the strength of you, that when you, you're going to be able to see the obstacles. Now, I, I, no, not today, Satan, leave me alone. Go ahead, Linda. Bye, Felicia. 
Right? No, it's not gonna it's not gonna affect you the way Satan tries to. Like, like he tried to throw everything at Job. Everything he could physically, spiritually, he couldn't do nothing to the man because his faith was based on God. And when you base your faith on God, he's never going to falter on us. He's never going to let us down. He's never going to not be there for us. Amen? Amen, amen. Like I said, this, this whole, it wasn't extensive. This was directed towards me because I, I deal with, we deal with a lot. And then this week was so funny. I found this out on Saturday. This young man, my blessing in the world, decided to have the worst week ever. He, he didn't want to sleep. He had us up late, I early, consistently, you name it, he did it for us. And I'm like, man, it's, it's, it's a struggle, man. What, what's, what is this? You know, the week before, he was, he was good. He was barely there. He was like a balloon. But not, not to, you're going to learn today is what he said. I'm still there. No, so you understand, this, it's, it's a struggle. But it wasn't a struggle because of my child. It was the different things, the excuses that I could have thrown and Sister Miriam and Marcia's face said, I can't, I can't, I can't preach. I've been up, we're exhausted, you know, we're, we're physically, I could have done that. And honestly, it would have been all on my right. But I said, no. Well, but I don't know, we went to sleep at 5.30 this morning, I think it was. He was up from 11 to 4, and then from 4 to 5.30. It was, it was difficult. I closed my eyes, and next thing you know, Sophie's up. So when she's up, everybody's up. And I said, no, I have to start my message. And the word has been planted in my heart the whole week. So I just wanted to make sure that I did this. And I didn't make an excuse for what was going on. Because I know when you bring the word of God, it's a blessing on my life. Amen. It's a blessing on my life because I preached what he told me to give. And it wasn't my word. It was since last week he gave me this word. So I had an obligation to, to make sure I, I spread this word that God has given me tonight, okay? Amen. So like Sister Miriam said, really listen, please mm -hmm. take this to heart, because the way God put it in my heart is, it, this is message was for a reason. This needed to be said for a reason. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just said just to be said because it's Friday and it's youth. This, somebody needed this in their lives to get them through something that may be coming up in the future, yeah. near future. So take what she said, take what Brother Pastor Alex said, and everything that goes on, and really submit it into your life and say, Lord, thank you for the service. Thank you for making me listen to what was going on and, and, and apply it to your life. Amen? Amen. With that being said, God bless you all. Sister Maria. Amen.